Hello, today I have six new under eye concealers to review for you that I've been testing out on my dry under eyes with dark circles. I'll show you how they apply, what they look like, give you price breakdowns, and of course my full thoughts on each concealer. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. I'm very picky about what goes on my under eye area because it's always been somewhat difficult, but it's getting more and more difficult of an area the older I get as it is for many of you. So let's see how these new New concealer releases stack up and if any might work for you. Now if you think you're my concealer or foundation shade match twin, I keep running shade match lists over on my blog. I'll have that down in my description box for you along with all the products I'm sharing and wearing today. And I'll have as many products as I can linked for you through the YouTube shopping icons, but sometimes they don't have certain products. So if you don't see some, those will be in my description box where I have everything. Now I am 48 years old. I have dark circles, discoloration, and under eye hollows with texture, fine lines, and dryness. It's a tough combo to find under eye products that provide enough coverage and hydration and everything I need. I know a lot of you understand the struggle. I know a lot of concealers claim to be creaseless, but there are some of us that crease no matter what concealer we use because of our anatomy. I am one of those people. So I do have to set my under eye, but I will show you each concealer on set so you can see the finish. I'm going to start with the concealer I was probably the most excited to try once I saw it was coming out because of how much I love the foundation and how much I use it in my daily life. This is Guerlain Terracotta Natural Perfection Concealer. This retails for $47 for 0.3 ounces, which breaks down to $39.17 per quarter ounce. There are 16 shades. Now I wear shade 2.5N in the foundation. It's a really nice match for me. And when I looked at their shade finder, it told me to also get the concealer in 2.5N, but something told me to maybe grab it in 2N instead because I like to go about a half a shade lighter under my eyes just to have a little bit of brightness, but not too much. And I'm really glad I did. I think 2.5 would have given me just too dark of a look under my eyes. Now, one thing I wanna point out really quickly before I get into the claims and my full review is that even though this was launched officially, a while back, it's taking a while to roll out in the US. I don't understand why. As of today, as of the filming of this video, the only place you can find all the shades of this concealer is on their website. And it's been several months. I'm not sure why that is. So moving on to the claims, they paired the long lasting power of a liquid concealer with the blurring radiance of a correcting powder. And they've included some nice ingredients like marine extract and argan oil. And they say this gives seamless, exceptional, buildable coverage for 24 hour hydration and wear. They also added a touch of color correction. They added a hint of pink in the lighter shades to correct dark circles, a hint of peach in medium tones to brighten shadowy areas, and a dash of yellow in darker shades to soften purplish dark circles. Now, just like the foundation, this is in a very elegant glass bottle and the doe foot is a little bit difficult to get out of the bottle. I think they did that so it wouldn't leak and it would wouldn't make a big mess around the top the way a lot of concealers can. It has a slim slanted doe foot and a very thin consistency, but it's not too watery so that it just blends away into nothing. It has a creamy thin consistency that applies and blends out quickly and easily. Now, all the clips you're seeing in this video are the concealers applied on their own with no corrector underneath. I wanted you to see them on their own without any help from corrector because the added coverage correcting you're gonna get from your corrector is going to vary depending depending on the corrector you personally use. So I would say this gives light to medium coverage without corrector underneath and a natural satin finish that's very smoothing and flattering on my under eye area. It feels very lightweight. Now there is a little bit of fragrance to this and fragrance is listed about halfway down the ingredient list. I don't notice that scent after I'm finished applying it and it doesn't bother my sensitive watery eyes. Now obviously if I wear a corrector with this, I get a little bit more coverage. I would say slightly under medium full for me personally. So similarly to the foundation, which I love, the finish of this is 
natural, extremely skin-like, smoothing, and flattering. But unlike the foundation that gave me more coverage than I was expecting from the consistency and the texture, this did the opposite. I was hoping I would have a nice duo that I could just reach for day in and day out, that this would be a super skin-like, medium to medium full coverage concealer that I could throw a corrector underneath and just be good to go. But it didn't give it to me. This is more appropriate for those of you with moderate dark circles, in my opinion. It's beautiful, it's just not enough coverage for me. I have a feeling this one's gonna be controversial, but here we go. This is Sephora Collection Best Skin Ever Glow Concealer. It retails for $15 for 0.23 ounces, which breaks down to $16.30 per quarter ounce. There are 30 shades. I have shade 25 Nude, which is described as medium skin with neutral undertones. I originally tried shade 22 Natural, which was light skin with neutral undertones, and it was way too light so I ended up with this one. This is supposed to brighten and conceal and provide hydration and up to 12 hours of wear and it's enhanced with plant-based prebiotics. This has a slim slanted doe foot and a thin watery texture that you would think would blend out quickly and easily and maybe it does for some people but for me this has been a very temperamental concealer. Some days it blends out just fine. Other days, it blends out into this kind of patchy, weird, dry look that still has a radiance to it because there are some, some sheen glimmer particles in here and seems to kind of separate. It's almost hard to explain what it does. I was unable to capture this on video to save my life, but I grabbed a couple of photos where I think you can see what I'm referring to compared to my unconcealed under eye. It just blends out patchy and weird a lot for me. Now because this has such light coverage for me, whether I'm wearing it over a corrector or by itself, I do need to add a little bit more in some of my dark areas. And when I try to do that, it just doesn't layer well over itself. It wants to blend away what's underneath it, even if I've let it sit there for a little bit. It wants to get a little bit patchy. It is a radiant concealer from glimmer sheen particles that reflect light. So if you have texture or dryness under your eyes, it will more than likely be exaggerated from those catching the light. So you just want to be aware of that. It does feel very lightweight and there is no scent. So if you need very, very light coverage and if you don't have any texture that this gets caught on, maybe that's what's happening to me, this might really work for you. I know there are some of you that are really liking this because I have heard you in my comment section, but for some reason, this is just not working for me and I have tried it many times at this point and that just goes to show you that everything works different for everyone. What works for you may not work for me and vice versa. I tried. I really gave this a good shot and the coverage is too light and it's just not flattering on my under eye area. Okay, I'm finally reviewing the Laura Mercier Real Flawless Weightless Perfecting Concealer. I've been getting your messages, I promise. I just needed to finish testing a couple of other concealers before I could get it up, and here we are. So this retails for $33 for 0.18 ounce, which breaks down to $45.83 per quarter ounce. There are 22 shades. Now, I started with shade 1C1, which is described as fair with cool undertones. The reason why I started so light is because in her previous concealer, which was one of my favorites and is now discontinued, I had to go a lot lighter than usual to correct and brighten. It just really worked well for me. So I did the same thing here and it was way too light. So I ended up with 2C2, which is light peach with cool undertones. I typically go peachy or pinky neutral with my discoloration, it works really well. So this is supposed to be the replacement for her Flawless Fusion Concealer, which is one of my favorite formulas that lives in my vanity. This is supposed to brighten, smooth, and hydrate and give medium natural coverage that wears up to 16 hours. It's got an 85% skincare complex. It's supposed to be crease proof, you know how I feel about that, but also cake proof. And it's clinically shown to improve 
improve the look of bare skin instantly and over time while reducing the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. And in addition to that, it's got this hydrolipid matrix that delivers immediate and time release hydration throughout the day. And there are ingredients in here that firm and smooth the look of skin and provide antioxidant protection as well. So this has a slim, rounded, slanted dough foot and a light, creamy texture that applies and blends out quickly and easily. It's buildable from light to medium coverage that builds on itself really nicely without caking to give medium to almost medium full but not quite coverage even without a corrector. It feels very lightweight and gives a natural, radiant, smoothing, flattering finish that wears really well all day. There's no added fragrance, but I do notice a slight faint scent from the natural ingredients. It doesn't bother me whatsoever. Now, when I wear a corrector with this, I would say it gives almost medium full coverage, but not quite medium full coverage the way Flawless Fusion did. It brightened and gave me medium full coverage when I wore it with a corrector. This is the concealer I have under this eye and you can see I still have some darkness and you can kind of see my tear trough. It's probably exaggerated because I'm sitting here on camera with these lights. This is what it looks like just in regular light just so you can see me in a natural setting. The Flawless Fusion kept that lifted brighter look a little bit better for me and it was something that I used to give me a little bit of added coverage in my darkest spots, even over other concealers, and it never caked. I would say this is a coverage level down from that. So I would say if you have mature, dry, textured skin and you want something smoothing and hydrating, skin-like and natural, this is a beautiful concealer that will give you medium coverage, maybe just under medium full if you're wearing a corrector. This is more of a casual day concealer for me. It's definitely not medium full, natural skin-like the way Flawless Fusion was, but it's still a lovely concealer. YSL All Hours Precise Angles Concealer retails for $39 for 0.5 ounces. You get a lot in this bottle. That breaks down to $19.50 per quarter ounce. There are 18 shades. I grabbed shade LN4, which is a light shade with neutral undertones. This is another one that's a little bit tough to get out of the bottle, but not as tough as the Guerlain. This is supposed to be a creamy, creaseless, full coverage concealer with a natural soft matte finish that gives up to 24 hours of wear and hydration. It's packed with skincare actives like caffeine extracts for anti-fatigue and jasmine petals for anti-dullness and soothing to help your skin be softer, smoother, and firmer after 14 days of wear. This has a larger, sharply angled doe foot applicator and the flat side is shaped like a fat diamond. They say it's to sculpt and seamlessly enhance your feet Features. I don't really like the shape of this applicator. I find it's kind of awkward personally. This has a thicker consistency that starts blending out smoothly, but then kind of wants to blend away. The clip I'm showing you is from the first day I tried it. And I'm glad I have this for you because I was really confused since it says this is full coverage and I wasn't getting anywhere close to that. It, it was blending away so much so I had to try three times to build up the coverage. It doesn't build up on itself very well. I still didn't get adequate coverage, which you'll see once both under eyes are complete. Now the finish can look natural and smoothing and it feels lightweight and hydrating, but it's just not enough coverage for me to be comfortable enough to, to wear it anywhere. Kind of like the Sephora Glow Concealer. And it's just so difficult to get an even coverage level. There's a very slight faint scent here, but there is no added fragrance similar to Laura Mercier. In my opinion, this was kind of a pointless concealer if you have anything above of mild discoloration. If you need just a little bit of concealing, this might do it for you. And it may even look pretty, but my texture and dryness and dark circles, the combo of those, I just don't think was right for this particular concealer, despite the claims. I also wanted to note, and I should have earlier back with the shades, that this was a little bit warm and deep. So if I had to do it over again, I would probably go a shade up and more neutral if that is an option.
Say slip tint radiant all over concealer with niacinamide retails for $28 for 0.17 ounce and that breaks down to $41.18 per quarter ounce. I have it in shade three, very light with cool undertones and there are 25 shades. So this claims to be a lightweight non-comedogenic concealer with natural radiant medium coverage that's clinically proven to wear for up to 12 hours and smooth and hydrate your skin. They specifically highlight the niacinamide in here to smooth condition even and brighten the appearance of your skin. Hyaluronic acid that's supposed to attract and bind moisture, smooth and hydrate, and glycerin, which is fatty acid known to increase your skin's moisture level. This has a small slanted doe foot applicator and a thin watery texture. And I should have said this earlier with some of the thinner textured concealers that we've been talking about, but most times I like to let them sit a little bit to thicken before I blend them out. It increases the coverage level a little bit, especially if they're concealers that claim to give medium coverage. Now, because this concealer is a bit on the thin side, it does take me quite a bit of light tapping to blend it out in order to get it to light medium to medium coverage with one layer. It's not the quickest application. So then I let it sit a minute because it is kind of thin and a little bit tacky before I add any where needed to increase the coverage level. And it does layer over itself nicely to take it up maybe half a uh, coverage level from light medium to medium coverage to medium, just under medium full. Now what I prefer to to do with such concealers is to swipe them on the back of my hand and let them thicken up there for a little bit and then apply with my finger that way. I just find that application a little bit quicker. This feels very hydrating and lightweight at the same time and gives a natural radiant finish that also feels hydrating to the touch. I personally, because I am so crease prone under my eyes, don't see a way to not set this with powder because I'll just be crease city otherwise. Now when I set it with powder, I I have to be very, very gentle. Because it's so hydrating and kind of sticky, the brush wants to leave marks and the powder wants to kind of adhere. It's a little bit tricky, so I have to use the right pressure. But if I use the right pressure, it can look really, really beautiful. So earlier I told you I have the Laura Mercier concealer under this eye with corrector underneath. And this eye has corrector plus the say concealer. So you can see it's still medium coverage. You can see a little bit of darkness coming through. I mean, these are medium coverage concealers. This doesn't claim to be more than that. There's no fragrance here. And it is a very hydrating, natural looking medium coverage concealer that does take a little bit longer to apply for me anyway than some other natural hydrating concealers. But if you get that application down, it can look really pretty. You know, the reason why I do these videos isn't just to give you ones I think are amazing or terrible. It's also to give you the little nuances about concealers because that might be something you like or don't like about a concealer you were thinking about purchasing. And this is one that, you know, I think can be really lovely, but it can take a little bit longer to get it just right if you have some of the same issues that I do. Again, your mileage may vary, but that's just what I've experienced with it. Now we have another concealer that pairs with a best-selling foundation that a lot of people have been wondering about. This is Estee Lauder Futurist Soft Touch Brightening Concealer. This retails for $36 for 0.2 ounces, which breaks down to $45 per quarter ounce. There are 30 shades. Yes, 30 shades. I'm in shade 2.5C. They claim this is a long-wearing, medium to full coverage, brightening, innovative skincare concealer. It's supposed to plump fine dry lines and help improve your skin over time. It has a vitamin C brightening complex, a tri-firming complex, and a hyaluronic acid complex to name a few of the skincare properties they gave to this concealer. And it has a silky hybrid formula that's supposed to cover and brighten dark circles with a soft radiant finish. It's supposed to be water and sweat resistant and not crease and wear all day. Now this doe foot is kind of a weird shape 
shape. It's very short and stubby. It's got almost a rounded wedge shape to it. It's got kind of a ball shape, but a rounded slant at the same time. They said the soft touch applicator is based on the shape of a fingertip for precise application and easy blending on all areas of the face and under eye. I don't like the shape of this applicator though. I, I thought I would, but there's something very awkward about this ball shape around the eye area for me. I prefer a point for getting in these little corners. Maybe that's just me. This is a creamy concealer that blends out easily and gives medium to medium full full coverage with corrector. There's a radiant natural finish to this concealer. I can still see this radiance under powder. Now I have to be careful when I blend this out because if I build up too much concealer around my lash line area, it will crease up during the day, even if I set it. So I try to go thinner under my lash line. That's just a little side note for those of you that crease up like I do. I find when I wear this on really long days, and I'm saying really long as in 12 to 14 hour days, I can look and feel dry under my eyes, which is really odd considering all the skincare and hydrating ingredients in here. But if I have a moderately long day, like eight to nine hours, it looks and feels beautiful. And this is whether or not I'm wearing corrector underneath it. Now they didn't add fragrance, but there is a scent to this that kind of smells like paint. This is one of those instances where it maybe could have benefited from added fragrance to camouflage, whatever the natural scent is in here, because I notice it really badly when I first pull the doe foot out until I'm finished applying it. Now once it's under my eyes, I don't notice it anymore and it doesn't bother my eyes, but I know that will bother some people. So I did want to mention it. I think if you layer this over a corrector you love and build it up only where you need it, this can provide really nice medium to full or full radiant coverage without shimmer or glimmer that wears nicely throughout a moderately long day. It seems like no one is launching medium full to full coverage concealers, so I'm really trying to hunt ones down that are good and not drying or unflattering, and I've been enjoying this one. I know sometimes you watch these videos and think, man, she's hard on those concealers or there were only, you know, one or two good ones out of all of them. Sometimes that's just the way it works out. I'm pretty hard on things I test. I do that to hopefully help you make better buying decisions. I hope you found this helpful in some way. If you did, I would love it if you would give this video a thumbs up and share it with someone who could benefit from it also. Subscribe if you're not already. And if you're interested in foundations, I have tons of foundation roundup reviews here you can check out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!